Hey chess lovers, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be playing the final blitz on Lee Chess and during the game I'll try to be as instructive as possible like always, making sure that there's something to be taken away as a learning that helps you improve your game to the next level. Now before we start off with the game, I request you to subscribe to my channel and press on the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I'm posting up daily without the miss. So yeah, let's start off with the game and see how it goes. Which pieces we get. Got the white pieces. I'll play the London system setup. It starts with d4. Bishop comes on f4, pawn to e3. Uh, I don't want to take this because otherwise his knight gets still up with tempo. So rather let him take and take with the e pawn because we are going to pl uh, planning to cast on the queen side. Develop the knight on f3. Some point of time, I expect him to play pawn forward, but that sometime is not right now. So I develop my queen on d2 this time, trying to go for bishop exchange because that is one of the defenders of the king's side. And, and he still castles, so you have to give it to the opponent. Um, probably now I can develop my bishop, but then he pushes pawn forward, break open the center. My king is in center, I need to make that thing right straight away. So I go here, I, we exchange pawns. Okay, so he wants me to exchange the knight as well. Well, here we go. Beware what you wish for. Because I'm going to castle first. Now you can exchange queens if you want to. He does, I take, comes in with the knight and I attack his knight and the pawn at the same point of time and he tries to save it but I'm afraid he's going to because pawn forward pushes the knight away and that loses on the rook on the pawn, nope because after that he has a knight move. Then I can stop it, but if he tries to exchange bishop, I don't need to take it. This is fair enough. I get the pawn. And that's all you need sometimes to win a game. And he comes with the knight, all expected. I can take, I should actually, there's no other option. Okay. I get the rook going. Just trying to run away his bishop somewhere. Oh, he still doesn't. What if I get the other rook as well? Now you have to run away. Yeah, wise choice, I must say. I take this. And then read out my knight onto c5. I'll plant it on d4. That will stay in the center, maybe going for the pawn later on. Uh, I think I'm comfortable here. But yes, I have to be beware of this bishop. That can be annoying at times. So rather, ah, he gave me a way out. Knight to b4. That loses the bishop on the spot. And why not take it? He does take with the rook. I'll play pawn forward instead of defending with my king now i've got extra pawn and that is all you need to win first of all i'll try to attack his pawn which he does save and then i can proceed with my pawns where i'm strong so i'll try to play on the side of the board where i'm strong and my opponent is not just trying to hold up with my rook on a solid square. Now unless he tries to move his king and then play pawn forward, he's not going to take that. And I'm going to go towards the opponent's king. Uh, rook, sorry. Okay, why not push forward? Okay. Um, I have to be a bit careful because I don't want to exchange some stuff by losing something okay 
I'll flip on forward. Trying to go for b5 next. I still can. He does take, I take back. He goes up. I can defend with the pawn or I can take my king up. Let's defend with the pawn, I would say. So that his rook is stuck. Trying to babysit my pawn. And I'm gonna go down maybe and take this or this some point of time. Yes, this rook is controlling everything. Okay, that should be losing. Because now I'm gonna keep my rook here and exchange them. I am not sure actually I should do it right away because this king is still in the center. He can move towards my pawns and try to annoy me. But yeah, that hangs one of his pawns for sure. Okay. If he wants to give both, I don't mind. And I go here. And I go forward. And I wonder how is he going to save it? Because as far as I know, he can't. And as I said, he can't. And I come with a check as well. Well, that's bad news. Okay, now let's see how do we stop him. I say first of all plant our rook here. That is always I'm going to add. And then come with the queen. Okay, he does take the pawn, which allows me to take his. And then I come here. And where does he go? Backwards. Give a check. Go here, taking trying to take on this pawn. Uh, check. He goes up. Check. Uh, check again. I should take it. Uh, I should not. Ah, I, that was a touch mistake. Check. And another one. Okay, trying to exchange this. Rook. I can take as well. Or I can create a staircase. Oh, he took it. And resigns. Because he was not going to win it anyhow. So let's analyze the game quickly from the computer perspective as well. If we could have done something better, but yeah, it was a nice game overall. Side of a d4, d6, uh, the London system set up from white. Bishop comes on f4, knight to d7 by the opponent. I play e3. Then he plays c5, uh, trying to be aggressive, but that gives me some more benefit. I play pawn to c3, trying to solidify my center. And he takes the center pawn, which you should not immediately. And I take back uh, because it's just spoiling your pawn section for nothing. I took with the e pawn. Uh, computer searching, I can take with the c pawn. But my idea was to cast on the queen side, so that's why the move. And the best move for the opponent is uh, pawn to e5, which I expected him to play, but he doesn't. Uh, so I develop my knight rather. And then he plays g6, uh, and I play queen to d2, trying to exchange the bishop and the queen, and that's what I just do straight away. Took on the bishop so that. I just remove one of the defenders from the king side. Then they love the knight on a3. My opponent plays e5. Finally, I take it. Back. He takes with the knight instead. Then I do take. Uh, and after that, yes, the right move to castle, not to take the queen. So identifying the best move in the situation makes you feel happy, and of course gives you some advantage in the chess. Uh, here he took on the queen, which was not right for him. Uh, computer suggesting he can keep the queen on the board and rather maybe play rook here or develop the bishop and then play rook in the center but instead he takes and i take back and i got control of the game already and after that after knight move on e4 that's a bad move because i can attack his knight which he tries to defend hang on to that knight with the bishop i play pawn forward and he has to go back and due to which he loses the center pawn which was a pass pawn as well so i took that and i get the advantage now of course he can fall in the trap by saying hey you can take my bishop first 
because if you do take the bishop there comes a fork and he wins some rook there but again you have to be careful with your rook move order uh, it's not necessary that if he has played the bishop and i have to take the bishop first but rather i can take on the knight and then he's left with nothing because he goes a piece down so small miscalculation can lead you to uh, a piece down suddenly so he plays right move there i would say or you could have just saved with the rook rather than exchanging stuff more when you're down and out with a pawn already uh, and he does exchange the knight and the bishop after that i get my other rook active as well he tries to defend and hang on to it with the bishop uh, with the rook and try to attack his bishop back he goes to the very weird square a6 because uh, you should not be eyeing the diagonal which is empty sorry he should rather have gone to the diagonal back towards the f5 because simple reason my king is on c file so you want to take control of the light square towards my king so that i don't have escape squares and then you can probably try and try to develop your rooks and try to checkmate but if you go in the wrong direction that's bad because you're not, never going to make it happen so that was passive gameplay by my opponent and then he i just went for rook exchange because i'm up and i knew that my knight can be more active and then I just get, got my knight to c2 first, trying to make more use of it. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, he plays rook to d5. Uh, but you have to give it to him that there was probably no other square for the rook as well to be actively used. Uh, but then he could have played pawn forward instead of bringing the rook straight away. But he was too fast to use his rook. And that loses on the spot because I have knight b4 and I can take that annoying bishop. Uh, which can annoy literally uh, during the end game. And he just tries to save his rook there, no other option. I took on the, uh, and again, I would say this is a good move because he's trying to take, with, uh, after I take the knight to the bishop, he plays his rook in such a way that he can take with the rook. Otherwise, he loses a good pawn structure as well. And if already it's three against uh, two pawns on the, king, on the queen side of mine, and if he plays, uh, if, he, if he would have taken with the pawn instead, that would be one against, because this becomes one, double pawns on the A file, nothing works. And, and that would be one against three pawns. And that's never going to happen that he could defeat me from there. So yes, he's trying to save there, but again, it's in game, I have extra pawn and I'm not going to let it go. I play A3, the opponent responds with G, G5 instead. And I go down to just make him uh, play some pawn move but rather he played a rook there trying to save it and then i start going with my pawns on the opponent's side where i have got extra pawns so i'm trying to play on the stronger side of the board that i that i am stronger with rather than playing on the side which is equal or i should say this side is actually better for black because black has got a king on that side with those three pawns and at some point of time the king can come in and take on the g pawn and then create some weakness. So I'm just trying to force play uh, my game towards the, where I'm stronger, and that's what you should always do. Then I got my rook back on e4, and that's a solid square for the rook. A, it controls the fourth rank completely, uh, so that if some point of time that exchange happens, I'm taking control of the fourth rank. Also, uh, to di displace my rook from here, opponent would have to go towards the g file and then play pawn forward that would be weakening for him as well and then again i have got d4 and from there my rook is not going to be displaced so i took control of the fourth rank that was again important he tries to attack my pawn gives me a space actually to move my king up i do he tries to play pawn h5 and i go up on to b3 and then he tries to attack my rook and i just play pawn forward rook is not going anywhere and then he plays pawn to a6 i go with a4 trying to break open the saint uh, the the place again where i'm stronger and i take that he, and i've got two pawns for one now and i play c4 now that is important to make sure that there's no point of time this pawn goes away and then he plays h4 uh, i just got my rook on d4 and then he plays pawn forward which is bad because Again, I get to exchange, I get to have a free pawn again. Rather, he could have played pawn, uh, king to e5, um, e5, and then also uh, 
you see, I was thinking 1.5 into play this, but this is bad because after my opponent takes, I got I lose my advantage of having that extra pawn. Plus, his king is more advanced, and if we have a race, he can go here or uh, and take on this pawn. And if I try to hang on to this pawn, he's going down and going to take this pawn on g2. So, any case, he can win. So, you have to be careful and very precise at the end game. Uh, I took on my time here uh, trying to analyze if I'm doing it right or wrong so that there's no hurry uh, to finish off the end game but rather be more precise. Uh, and then he plays f6, and which was bad, as I said. I played d6, rook to d6, taking on the pawns. He goes down. I took on the pawn first, which was on f6, so that it comes to the check. He goes down. I got the other pawn as well. And he takes a pawn on g2, and I get my rook back on uh, g5, so that just in case his pawn tries to advance, I can stop it anytime. He takes the, the pawn on h3, and I start going with my uh, pawn uh, promotion to queen. The only way to stop is to go with rook to b6, b8 straight away. Uh, if he does, uh, c8, sorry. Uh, then I can play pawn forward as well. That is one option. Uh, and if he tries to stop it, uh, I can also defend it and if you see then I have got another pawn there and I'm not going to lose that so it's very much comfortable for white from here as you see 7.1 pair of white so there's no way black is going to make back uh, make his way back unless uh, white isn't careful and then he rather pushed his pawn forward rather than trying to save me and then I got my queen uh, attacking his king as well because that came with a check 